everyone, it's Diabetic Danica. Welcome back to my channel. So I've been getting a lot of questions about why doesn't my blood sugar on my continuous glucose monitor have the same number as the blood sugar on my blood glucose meter with a finger stick? And so I figure I'll make a video about the factors that go into this and kind of what could be going on. So this is just generally things that I think about when the numbers aren't matching up. There are different types of continuous glucose monitors, so things vary between the sensors and things like that, but basically the first big umbrella thing to understand is that your continuous glucose monitor and your blood glucose monitor measure your sugar differently. So a continuous glucose monitor or a sensor is measuring the sugar in your interstitial fluid, which is the fluid between your cells. So if your sensor is on your arm, on your tummy, on your leg, the fluid in between your cells has sugar in it and it's detecting that sugar. Whereas a finger stick blood sugar is your actual blood. It's the sugar in that blood drop. And so after a low blood sugar, for instance, um, the sugar is gonna hit your bloodstream first and then it goes from your bloodstream to your interstitial fluid. So after a low blood sugar, your sensor could be a little bit delayed compared to a finger stick because the sugar hasn't reached the interstitial fluid yet. So that's something that's kind of helpful to understand. There is also just a normal expected variance between the numbers. So even blood sugar meters that we use at home for finger sticks are not 100% perfect, accurate, this is exactly what your blood sugar is. There's a normal up to 20% variance um, in terms of the number it's giving you and what your like actual legit blood sugar is. And so the same goes between the sensors and the meters. There's a normal up to 20% variance between the two numbers. The most accurate way to know what your actual blood sugar is, is a lab draw, but obviously we're not gonna draw labs on you multiple times a day to dose your insulin. And so we go with what we have, which is our meters and our sensors. So normal variance between the two numbers. So basically you can take the blood sugar, multiply it by 0.2, and that's the amount of points above or below that number that it could be varying. So if I check my blood sugar and it says it's 100, I check on my CGM, it says 80. 100 times 0.2 is 20 points up or down, so 80 is within that 20%. So what do you do if it's outside of the normal 20%? If it's a bigger difference between the two numbers, these are just a couple of things that I think about. First thing to think about is on the first day of a sensor, so you just put it in that day, it's likely to be less accurate because there's a slight trauma response where you inserted it. And so it's still kind of adjusting to your body. They're known typically in general to be less accurate on that first day. You also want to think about your blood sugar meter. So typically if the meter is older than five years old, a new one is a good idea. The test strips also have to be within date, so they're not expired and they haven't been exposed to water or extreme temperatures. Another factor when you're doing a finger stick is you need to wash your hands. So if there's sugar on your hands, it's gonna read higher on the meter, so making sure your hands are clean before you do the finger stick. So those are some things to think about when considering the number that your meter is giving you. When it comes to your sensor, you can also think about where on your body it's inserted. So if it's in scar tissue, it might not read as well. So if it's a spot you use all the time, if you're putting pressure on the sensor, either laying on it or it's right where your pant line falls or something, that can affect the accuracy as well. Especially with false lows, they're called compression lows because the pushing against the sensor causes the sugar to move away from the sensor and it can sense that your blood sugar is lower then even though it's not, it's just away from the sensor. So I also will think about the storage of the sensor. So sensors do have a temperature range that they're allowed to be in and so when your sensors were delivered, did they stay on the porch for a while in the winter or in the summer and get really hot or really cold? That can affect the potential accuracy of that sensor when you're using it. So making sure it's within the correct temperature range and also the sensors aren't expired. I'll also look at the numbers and see if the readings have been kind of spotty, like if the numbers have been kind of jumping around more than I think they really are in my body. I might think maybe the sensor's having some trouble. And even that little transmitter, like a Dexcom transmitter, it expires after three months. So is it getting towards the end of that three months and starting to have trouble? Is it cutting out, cutting in, that kind of stuff? Um, 
just more stuff to think about. Some sensors have also been given a warning if you're on high doses of vitamin C or if you're taking Tylenol, it can affect the readings for some sensors. So think about if you've taken those things recently, if that does affect the sensor that you're using. Another thing to think about, if your glucose is rising or falling rapidly. So as I mentioned, the delay in readings to the sensor means that if your blood sugar is changing quickly, it's more likely there's gonna be a bigger difference between your finger stick blood sugar and the sensor as the sensor needs to catch up. It can be like 15 minutes-ish behind. Um, and that's gonna be a bigger difference than if it's changing fast compared to if it's just pretty steady. So some sensors do allow you to calibrate it, which just means that you take the number from your meter and enter it into your sensor device um, to hopefully get it to be closer to the number on your meter. Um, and so that's something I consider doing as well if I've kind of gone through the scenarios and really think, okay, my sensor is really off, I'll calibrate it with my meter. Because our meter is always our fallback. That's gonna be what we consider more accurate. That's what we fall back on because it's from your actual blood sugar, the blood drop. And if worse comes to worst and I've calibrated or I'm not able to calibrate or I've tried everything, I've gone through the scenarios, the end result, the last thing to do is just kind of to remove the sensor for me. So if it's giving me numbers that aren't accurate, it's not helping me, um, I will remove it, insert one somewhere else and hope that the new one is more accurate. But if I ever you know, lose a sensor early, it's a good idea to call the company because uh, typically they'll send you a free replacement of a sensor that doesn't last the full amount of time that it's intended to. So all that to say, pretty complicated, right? When it comes into different things that can be affecting the readings. Um, I wish that all sensors and meters were exactly, amazingly, miraculously perfect and it gave you the exact number that your lab stick, lab draw blood sugar would be. But that's just not the world we're living in. So these are just some things I think about when uh, the numbers are way off and things to kind of go through my head and be like, okay, like, could this be a factor that's throwing off the sensor? So all that to say, um, sensors are still amazing tools. I absolutely love wearing a continuous glucose monitor. I think it makes a world of difference. And the times that it's way off, like I'm describing, are few and far between for me. So it's not like this is a problem I'm dealing with every day or anything like that. But just because I've gotten a lot of questions about it, I figured make a video, kind of go through the thought process. But invaluable tool, I think, to be able to see your blood sugar readings every five minutes and the trend arrow and get the alarms and all that amazing stuff. So let me know if I missed anything. There might be something I'm leaving out in terms of things to think about with accuracy of sensors and meters. Um, oh, I just thought of another one. <laughs> Dehydration. So if you're dehydrated, um, it can affect the sensor readings as well. So just making sure you're drinking plenty of water. Um, if I missed anything else, feel free to comment down below and just tell me what other things you've noticed that affect your sensor readings or your finger stick blood sugars or whatever things that you think about when it comes to accuracy. Um, subscribe to my channel. I make videos about type 1 diabetes life and give this video a thumbs up. Thanks guys. Bye.